grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome again to Greensport Parish Church and thank you Stuart for playing that lovely hymn that takes me right back to Blaise Junior School all those years ago, God is love, his the care, tending each everywhere. You're very welcome here and it's a landmark day for us today because we'll be meeting together as part of God's family in the Canon Tiny Hall uh, along the road from the church, our church halls, as we meet again for corporate worship, worshipping together. The difference is, uh, unlike you at home or wherever you are watching this service, uh, those of us in the church hall won't be allowed to sing for the time being. But there will come a time when we can sing and when that will sing our hearts out. And also, there will come a time when we can sing once again here in this lovely little parish church here in Groomsport. So you are all very, very welcome today to join myself, Amanda and Stuart, and those along the road in the church hall, joining together to worship a wonderful, loving God. As the hymn says, sing aloud, loud, loud, sing aloud, loud, loud. God is good, God is truth, God is beauty. Praise him. So, our worship. Lord, speak to us that we may hear your word. Lord, move among us that we may behold your glory. Lord, receive our prayers that we may learn to trust in you. So, wherever we are, uh, we have gathered as God's people and however we are this morning, wherever we are this morning, we worship him together and we worship him in the words of that very familiar hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
about being human is that too often we fail to recognise our own failings, uh, our sin. So now we take a moment to call to mind the things that we have got wrong constantly, all the things that we try to get right and fail to do. We take a moment, remembering of course that here, certainly in this church, we believe the Word of God is living and active, that the Word of God judges the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. All is open and laid before the eyes of him to whom we have to give account. So wherever we are today, let us confess our failings and our sin, and let us do so in penitence and faith. We pray. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. And I pray that the God of love and power will forgive us and free us from our failings and our sin. That that same God will heal and strengthen us by his Holy Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So wherever we are, let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We give you thanks, loving Father, because by your Holy Spirit you lead us into all truth and give us grace to proclaim your gospel to all peoples and to serve you as a royal priesthood. So with the angels and with people all around the world, we tell of your glory, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And in our church's calendar, we reach the eighth Sunday after the great feast of Trinity, and this is the prayer for the day. Blessed are you, Lord, and blessed are those who observe and keep your law. Lord, help us to seek you with our whole heart, to delight in your commandments, and to walk in the glorious liberty given us by your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello. Today's first reading comes from the letter to the Romans. We're going to read chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship in the temple, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is, over all, God blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord.
And our second reading, this is taken from Matthew's Gospel and we'll be reading chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Now when Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew from his hometown of Nazareth in a boat. He went to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, and he blessed and broke the loaves. And he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowd. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. Remarkable how Jesus always has the right action at the right time and in the right places. Remarkable, unlike us mere mortals, although Jesus of course was mortal, as well as being God, but that's a sermon for another day I expect. He has his uncanny, uncanny ability to see right to the heart of people's needs and desires and to speak to them and to touch them where they need it most. Of course the people in the crowd uh, when he came to feed the 5,000 would probably be oblivious of all this. They were just impressed by this charismatic rather nondescript person who came from a little town in the middle of nowhere, Nazareth of Galilee and yet they had seen him perform miracles, they had seen him challenge not just the Roman authorities, the hated, dreaded Roman soldiery and militia that, that ruled Palestine at that time, he also had taken on the religious authorities. And therefore he was, if you like, for the time being, their pin-up boy. They didn't stop to think or consider, I suspect, what motivated him, and too often uh, they misread his motivations. So there he is with this enormous crowd, this familiar story where he takes the five loaves and the two fishes and he feeds the five thousand. So you are sitting on the hillside, there you are, and you see the baskets coming around with the bread and the fish and you are a member of that crowd. Do you stop to think where it's come from? Have you seen the trucks arriving with all the catering? No, you're just pleased to receive the bread and the fish. You just think this is a wonderful day, it's a lovely day out, it's evening and all your needs have been satisfied. You haven't stopped to consider how they got there. Take it for granted and it seems to me that one of the messages or lessons of the feeding of the 5,000 is just how much we take God for granted. Yes, there are lots of people now who are looking into how the world came into being and how things are produced and how we can best protect the planet uh, with seven billion people living on it, how we can make enough to go around. But on the whole, I guess that 98% of us don't really stop and consider these great questions in any depth, just like the crowd on the hillside there who have been fed by our Lord. We don't stop to remember, deep in our hearts, that as the Harvest Hymn says, all good things around us are sent from heaven above. 
I'd ask you today and during this coming week just to pause and take a moment each day to think where does it all come from and consider the love behind all that we have, the love of God who has given us more than we could ever want and certainly more than we could ever need. Take a moment this week to think about that and when you've thought about it, when you've thought about this wonderful God who has made this wonderful, beautiful world and all that therein is, the God who has given us everything we could ever desire, take a moment to say thank you and to praise that God for all his blessings to us and for us. We declare our faith in that living God and it's important to remember this God is not an abstract philosophical construct, it's not a figment of your or my imagination, this God is real, who does real things such as feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. So we declare our faith in that living and loving God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. A man who came to know the reality of God's love and grace was John Newton. And he wrote one of the most famous hymns in any hymn book. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
together, wherever we are, we join in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord of your people, strengthen your church in all the world. We thank you that wherever we are today, we can worship you, we can join our prayers one with another in safety and security. Our hearts go out to Christians in places like northern Nigeria, in Iran and Iraq in parts of the Sudan, in China, places where just to call yourself a Christian invites torture, imprisonment, death. Wherever we are, Father, our hearts go out to our brothers and sisters in Christ struggling today for the faith. We pray for our local churches, not just this parish here in Greensport, not just our friends in the Presbyterian churches here in this village, but if you are far from here, take a moment to remember your own local church, your minister, and those who serve in that particular place. Priests, pastors, ministers. And once again here in this church, Loving Father, we pray that you will bless John, our Archbishop, and David, our Bishop. And through these services, wherever we are, build us up in faith and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of creation, look with favour upon this world that you have made. We've heard how your Son fed the multitude and continues to feed us by your Holy Spirit and through the giving of the sacrament. We thank you for all the wonders of creation. And we pray that we may have the courage to use those gifts for the good of all your children, wherever they may live. Lord of creation, forgive us that today when we think about our full fridges and freezers and larders, when we think that we are well fed, forgive us that there are people in this world going hungry. It is our prayer this holy day that you will guide the nations into the ways of justice and of peace, and that you will bless Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who hold authority under her. Here in this province we pray for our assembly, just as we pray for the cabinets and the government in Westminster and the two devolved assemblies in Edinburgh and Cardiff. We pray for our land. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of our relationships, comfort and sustain the communities in which we live and work and help us to love our neighbours as ourselves. Perhaps we should take a moment to pray for ourselves, for the gift we have to love people, even those we find amazingly difficult to live with, those we become irritated by. Father, give us the courage to love them, to love the unlovely and the seemingly unlovable. We pray for the people that we live with, our families and our friends, the people we live next door to. And if we look into our hearts, we will see many, many people that perhaps have fallen out of our world in recent months or years. We find just one, one person or one family, and we hold them in our hearts 
for a moment. Loving Father, help us to love one another just as you love us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of all healing, relieve and protect those who are sick or suffering today. I ask you particularly to remember in your prayers, Gregor. In this parish, we remember our friends who are living in care homes and nursing homes. Elsie in Crookpatrick. Sadie and Heather in Edgewater. Les in Cranley. Maureen and Audrey and all our friends in Baloo. Eileen in Mavilla Lodge. Yvonne in Blair Main. Audrey and Minor in Kingsland. Vi in Seahaven. And I'm sure you all know of people who are in need of God's love today, in need of your prayers. Take a moment now to remember them before God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty and merciful God, who in days of old didst give to this land the benediction of thy holy church, withdraw not, we pray thee, thy favour from us, but so correct what is amiss and supply what is lacking, that we may more and more bring forth fruit to thy glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Lord of eternity, I pray that you will bind us all together by your Holy Spirit, wherever we are today. Bind us together in communion with all your saints, and all those who, having confessed the faith, have died in the peace of Christ. We take a moment to remember those we have loved and who have died, and who we pray now rest in God's eternal and loving peace. Loving God, may we come with all our loved ones and all your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom, where with them we will pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Ireland is known as the land of saints and scholars, and one of the greatest saints of all, and scholar indeed was Patrick, and he bequeathed to this land and to the world that great prayer, St. Patrick's breastplate, Christ be beside me, Christ be before me. Uh, we sing a version of the breastplate now.
time together to an end. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose and to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And let us give glory to God, whose power at work among us can do infinitely more than all we can ask or conceive. To him be glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus for ever and ever. Amen. And I pray that the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I pray the blessing of God will be with you and those you love, those you care for, those you pray for. God's blessing be with you and them, not just today, but for always. And wherever we are, from this time of worship, peace, prayer and quiet. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.